welcome back. It has been quite some time since we've watched some Grey's Anatomy together. So today we are going to go through an episode of Grey's Anatomy with some obstetric or gynecologic theme. This video is kindly sponsored by Native. We'll hear more about them in a minute. It's a bowel obstruction. I know the symptoms. I have IBD. I've had three obstructions and three surgeries. All right, what are your symptoms? Pain, bloating, cramping, bowel obstruction symptoms. Ow! Okay, I'd love to take your word for it, but I have to get Get you. a CT, yeah, I know. Can you just order it, please? It really hurts. Okay. A lot of times patients who have complicated medical histories are correct when they tell you what their diagnosis will be. That being said, you can't just take people at their word because you need to do an appropriate workup or you could miss something and cause significant harm. So for this patient, I would want to get a history. When did it start? How long have you been noticing it? Does it come and go? Does it radiate anywhere else? What are your bowel movements like? When was your last period? Are you having sex with someone who can get you pregnant? Are you using any form of pregnancy prevention? What's your pregnancy history? Have you had any other infections in the pelvis or abdomen? Things like that. And I would also want to do a physical exam. So I'm going to want to, you know, listen to heart and lungs just to be thorough, feel of the tummy, feel of the pelvis, listen to bowel sounds, maybe do a pelvic exam if I feel like it would help us in the quest for deciding what we are dealing with. And then I would probably want to get at minimum some labs, at least a blood count to make sure they are not anemic and a pregnancy test and obviously some vital signs and things like that. That's where I would start. Hey, Paige. Hey. Uh, yes, I have a 24-year-old patient with IBD. She presents with severe abdominal pain. She thinks it's an obstruction, but I mean, she's in way too much pain. Uh, I think it might be a perf. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm waiting for the images to come up, so. All right. I haven't seen a bowel obstruction in a long time because I don't typically see patients with bowel obstructions, but I remember it being quite painful. I know a perforation would probably hurt more. That's where the bowel actually gets a hole in it, but bowel obstructions can be very painful. Do you even like kids? What? Well, we really haven't talked about it, and I do have three of them. I have 16 first cousins, age 2 to 15. A 14-year-old, Tony, always calls me about girls. Five-year-old, Sonia, she attaches herself to my leg when she sees me, and I basically wear her like a leg brace. <laughs> the two-year-old likes to put things in my hair and then dig them out. <laughs> the problem's gonna be that your kids might like me more than you. You think? Mm -hmm. Oh. Scans are up. Okay, Avi, your scans are up. We're almost done. <sighs> She's very pregnant. They'd only quickly blinked across the screen and I don't know what they're going to have be her diagnosis, but she definitely has probably a 20 week minimum fetus in that uterus. If you look on the MRI, you can see the fetal skull or CT scan. Sorry, I think it's a CT scan. Scans are up, we're almost done here. Oh my God. You didn't do a pregnancy test? No, 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 no. They saw it when I saw it. She ran standard labs and then a CT. What? Oh my God. You guys, I'm not pregnant. I just have, ow! Avi, <gasps> you are pregnant and you are in labor and it looks like you're crowning. What? What? That's Paige OB. They should be quite embarrassed because clearly nobody laid hands on this patient and did an exam at all. I mean, based on that, quick glance at the CT scan and her symptoms, she would be able to have that palpated. Clearly nobody laid hands on this patient. What kind of doctoring are we doing? You have a patient with severe abdominal pain and you don't even touch their tummy to see what's going on. Surely you would have felt the uterus. To Paige OB? Yeah, it's a busy delivery day apparently. Ow! Okay, I'll be good, please. How do you give a pregnant woman a CT? Kadri ordered the CT. Because oh, I had my period yesterday, this makes no sense. Bear down, Avi. Good job. She did not have her period yesterday. You cannot have periods while pregnant. She might have had bleeding yesterday that she interpreted as a period, but I know that y'all know this is my pet peeve, but you can't have periods while pregnant. The hormones that you have prevent that. Shedding your uterine lining is hormone related, and if that happened, you wouldn't be able to stay pregnant. Oh my God. Uh, Two wounds. What? Uh, oh, look at this. It's a uterus. Didelphus, look at this, Gray. I'm a little busy right now, Dr. Who Bailey. Who the hell is uterine? You have two uteri, but you're only pregnant in one. Oh my God. Good job, good job, Mommy. Come on. No 
almost there. Not that, okay? Come on. The patient's like, I literally don't care right now. Can you give me a minute? Thank you to the wonderful sponsor of today's video, Native. As some of you know, if you've watched my channel a long time, I have very sensitive skin and I have to be really careful about the products I use or I will break out in a rash or cause a flare of eczema. I've been using Native deodorant for a long time and they've been supporting my channel almost as long as I've been on YouTube. Their deodorants aren't sticky and they somehow managed to keep me feeling fresh even after a long sweaty operating day under a bunch of PPE. But most importantly, their sensitive range of products eliminates the baking soda, which is an ingredient that my pits are not a fan of. They have a huge range of scents, including my favorite, which is coconut vanilla, because it reminds me of being on a lovely tropical vacation, even when I'm actually just going to the hospital. All of their products are 100% vegan and cruelty-free, and they now even have the option for a plastic-free version, which is the same formula you love with more sustainable packaging. Normal price for a three-pack is $39, but if you'd like to try out Native and support my channel in the process, you can get a 33% discount on a three-pack of deodorant or 20% off of any of their other products like toothpaste and body wash by using code MAMADOCTOR at checkout or clicking on my link in the description box down below. Now, let's get back to the video. What is uterine didelphus? This is a Mullerian anomaly where the uterus, instead of growing from two pieces into one, which is what typically happens, the uterus starts in embryologic development as two pieces, grows together as one, and then this internal septum disappears, it dissolves, and you have one uterus and one cervix. In the process of coming together, something can go wrong really at any point. You can end up with a variety of different Mullerian anomalies. Anything from uterine didelphus, which is two completely separate uteri, and usually will have two separate cervices as well, to one cervix and a uterus that has two complete different sides, which is a bicorneal uterus. You can have a unicorneal uterus where one side develops and this other side just kind of is a remnant. You can have a uterus that grew together and never lost its internal separation, which it just has a big thick septum all the way down. You can have a uterus that kind of has two top points that looks like a heart. That's called an arcuate uterus. Any variation of amount of dissolved material between the two uteruses when they grow together can create these anomalies. It's funny how she reacts too, because although this is a relatively unusual diagnosis, it's not so rare that I would like, oh my gosh, it's a uterine didelphus. It's unusual, but not incredibly rare. <laughs> Yeah, that baby's big enough that it should have been able to be palpated. I'm still not certain what this has to do with her period though. I don't know if they are implying that because she has two uteruses, she had her period yesterday because the other uterus was menstruating. Surely they're not going to say that, but they did kind of imply it. That doesn't happen. Even if you have two uteruses, the timing of when you have a cycle is dependent on when you ovulate. And the timing of when you ovulate is dependent on the hormones that induce ovulation. And the hormones that induce ovulation are not happening when you are pregnant. If you don't ovulate, you can't have a cycle. You can certainly have bleeding during pregnancy. And for some people, especially if they really don't think they can get pregnant or they're not monitoring their cycles, which we've talked about extensively in the didn't know I was pregnant episodes, then they might interpret that bleeding as a cycle. This is particularly common in people who have very irregular cycles. I know that when people say it, just talking about it, they just mean they had bleeding and they're not differentiating that. But from a physiologic standpoint, you can't have a period, a menstrual cycle while you are pregnant. Hi, Avi. How are you feeling? Hey, look at him. Hello. Look at what I made. Oh, yeah. I find it really weird that they were like, page OB, and then OB didn't make it. And now for some reason, this patient's receiving their postpartum care with the surgeons or ER doctors or whoever these people are. Okay, so apparently Kadri did do a pregnancy test, but she didn't wait for the results because Avi was so sure she knew what was going on. Okay, I'm gonna say a thing, if only to spare you the humiliation of your girlfriend having to say it. Trust but verify. Trust but verify. Excellent, excellent advice. And the second part of advice I would have is, if your patient, is having abdominal pain, do an abdominal exam. If you feel a giant mass, it might be 
a fetus. Pregnancy with a uterine didelphus can increase the risk of preterm labor. It can increase the risk of malpresentation, so the baby being in um, like breech or transverse presentation, and it can increase the risk of uterine rupture, although that's still incredibly uncommon, just because you only are dealing with half a uterus. Most of the time it's okay, but it does slightly increase the risk of some of those things. I would say in general, I have diagnosed more uterine anomalies based on people who got pregnant and didn't know they had it than people who just came in with a problem. So a lot of times this truly does go undiagnosed until the time of pregnancy. And I've even seen people who had them diagnosed and they had had a normal pregnancy and delivery before and, and nobody knew. So it can be a little bit hard to pick up sometimes. hope that you learned something today. If you want to watch another OBGYN Reacts episode, I will link a playlist right over here. Jump into some of the other videos. Binge watch all of them if you'd like. If you're new and you'd like to subscribe, I would love to have you. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. I'll see you next Monday. Don't forget to check out Native. They've supported this channel for a long time and you can check them out using my link in the description box below.